Hey folks, you may remember in one of my earlier videos, I was dealing with a leak at the thermostat housing I couldn't seem to uh, clean up. I had the thermostat housing milled, my buddy's uh, milling head, and uh, applied some JV Well and sanding and everything, new gasket and um, aviation uh, silicone type stuff, gasket sealer. I still see a little leak. So I suspect there's a crack in there. I couldn't identify it as a crack. I took a look at it, but but I try it. So not the end of the world. I have a spare engine here. I have a spare 25 inch long block, Canadian built 218. And I'm going to take the head off that. I already have. I've dropped it off the machine shop. I've asked them to crack check it first and sandblast it and boil it, whatever you need to do, clean it all up and then mill the deck, make sure it's smooth and straight. And I'm planning to put it on this engine, which is a 251. Now, my understanding is the combustion chamber uh, should be a little smaller on the 218 engine, which would be awesome, because I'll get a little more compression out of this engine. And it has been done. I'm not breaking new ground here. Uh, uh, referenced a good friend who's done this, and he's had great luck. It's been 10 years with a 218 head on his engine. So uh, the other thing I'd like to do is, is turn the two heads over, compare them side by side, and measure the oil displacement. To, uh, I'll, I'll put... I'll measure the oil in each cylinder, uh, combustion chamber of the head, and see if we can find out how much bigger or smaller the two heads are compared to each other. That'd be cool. All right, so I'm going to walk you through a head replacement on my 1938 Chrysler here, 251 engine. We will start, I will just drain the antifreeze, and then I'll start on bold stuff, and I'll walk you through it. See if you learn anything. It'll be fun. There is one more thing. I have a new little toy I'm going to show you in this episode. Uh, another new tool for uh, the workshop. See how it works. I'll get it set up and uh, looking forward to trying it. You can see what's going on right here. This coolant is coming out of this area over here. It pools in around the spark plug well here and then it burns off and leaves this brown residue behind. And uh, left alone, it's going to make a mess of my engine bay and end up on the firewall and all the other areas. I don't think it's necessary to take the hood off to do this, but I'm going to anyways, just for good visibility. It's nice, open the area up. Vacuum advance line, get that out of the way. Temperature probe. Glenn, uh, the back is stubborn, so I'm going to go 
for the special wrench here. Get a better bite on it. Didn't come. Hey, you're stubborn. Okay, we're gonna go after the big gland nut on the end, pull it right out. tube, the heat sensor tube, is uh, it's a capillary tube and it's filled with ether. And if you break it, all the ether comes out and it's done. I'm not sure if anybody's ever had any success repairing one. And as you can imagine, the price for a replacement is pretty pricey. Everything, everything's clear now. The cylinder head is going to pop out all the bolts. Now, in the past, I have used a breaker bar and actually broke a head bolt. So, we're going to use an impact here. Nice little Ryobi. Try to swivel up the back here. We're all up to one. Put a ton of force on there because you'll do what I did. Rookie move. Snap the bolt head off. I'm not going to do it this time though. So you might have to tap the head with a rubber mallet at this point just to make it uh, move a little bit, break away some scale or rust. Maybe the head gasket stuck to it. Now I can see them, but I can't remove them yet. We take the intake and exhaust manifold off, unbolt it from the engine, take the valve covers off, and then tap them out. It would be a pretty good time to relap them, I guess. I don't know, it wouldn't hurt from this far. And I got spare gaskets. Gaskets are cheap. So I thought I'd look at the cylinder head and see if I see anything abnormal. Um, this is uh, what they call a Siamese uh, block. Each two pair of cylinders are closer together. And you'll see the water surrounds this area here, but the water does not travel between the cylinders here. The water passage is here, another one here. So these two pairs, no water between, these two none, and here. And this is the thinnest part of the cylinder head gasket here, in this area. I don't know if that's the area that's prone to failure or not, but I do notice something here. See the carbon buildup between the two here? Right on the gasket. This one's nice and clean. Here it's clean. Right there. That's between number three and four. Then I see it back here too, between five and six. Now I don't know why or if that's relevant or not, but I'm thinking some I think gases have been entering that area. Had decent compression. Um, you know, maybe just it was time uh, to retorque the head bolts, or maybe one was missed or something. I don't know, but I don't really, I'm not an expert here, but I don't see a lot for concern here. I'll take that gasket off and look at the other side and have a look at the cylinder head, see if we can find a crack. I cleaned up the area that I think the crack is. See if you can see it. Along here. Traveling down this area. I think it's propagated a bit since 
last time I had this off. It's getting worse, I guess. I guess I was hopeful that wasn't a crack. And I believe it is. And the coolant pools in the spark plug well here. I'll show you one cool thing. I put a flashlight down in the water hole there with a I can actually see right down into the bottom of my block and see that it's very clean down there. That's where the sediment sits. I don't know if you can see much of it there, but nice and clean. I sure like to see that in my block. The only thing I'm seeing is just a little bit of wear on the cylinder walls. A little vertical wire mark there. Um, again, like I said, I cannot think it, feel it with my finger now. For whatever reason, number one is extremely clean. Um, still see cross hatch pattern there. All right, here's the new toy I mentioned. I bought a digital ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, I think it's a 15 liter container. It's a good size. Uh, a friend of mine has used one before. I've never used one. He said try about a half a cup of spray nine and then uh, fill the rest with water. Works as like a degreaser, I guess. This is new to me, but we're gonna put our head bolts in there. Be a good test. The reason I bought this is, well, someone did tell me it's a game changer once you own one and you start using it. They uh, they said it was just incredible for cleaning stuff. Let's put that in there too. <clears throat> so what the heck? Let's try it, right? And um, but my main reason for buying it was because I want I want to put the carburetor in there. Um, I know the carburetor in my '38 Chrysler isn't ideal and the work I've done has made it better. It's progressively gotten better over time as I've troubleshot most of my issues with that engine, but I'm still not happy. So we're gonna put the carburetor in here. That's why I bought a bigger one. I said 15 liters, so I'm gonna leave this here for, oh, let's try it. Let's try um, a couple hours to see how these bolts look when we're done. You reading the instructions here, it looks like I can heat it. The hottest it will go is 80 Celsius, then it starts over at one degree. So, and then the longest I can do it, it looks like to be 30 minutes for some reason, but I guess we'll see what it looks like after 30 minutes. And now it'll start heating up. And... All right, well, we're waiting for this ultrasonic cleaner to do its job. We might as well go for a drive, eh? You wanna go for a car ride? You can hear this thing. Quiet. I've heard people say their ultrasonic cleaners are high pitched, noisy, white things. This is Vivor brand or whatever. It's quiet. Let's go for a drive.
right, I've had this thing on now for uh, quite a while. I had, a, I guess the longest I can set it for is half an hour. I didn't know that when I ordered it online, but um, I turned it on three times. I'm pretty happy with that. Well, seems like a pretty effective way to uh, to clean without using harsh chemicals. Anyways, all right, I dug out my spare new parts that I have to check and see if I'm going to go into the intake and exhaust manifold. If I do that, I'm going to need gaskets, of course, and uh, can't remember what I have. An oil pan set, uh, water or sorry, cylinder head set. This is for uh, the hump style on the front of the bypass. So the head I took off did not have that. Non-hump engines. No little hump on the front there for the water bypass. That's the head gasket that fits on the head that came off my 251 because I got the little bypass hose. Brand new. There we go. Uh, Felpro manifold set. MS85E3D. If you need one of those intake and exhaust manifold gaskets. One more. There's another set. Intake and exhaust manifold. Let's intake manifold. Intake and exhaust manifold. You guys probably know where I'm going next with this project. I can't restrain myself. I enjoy working on these cars so much. I see any excuse to deal with something, and make it better, might as well. This car's down, I can still drive this one, I'm spoiled. So this video is probably long enough. I gotta keep you guys wanting more. So next video, we're gonna get deeper into this engine. Um, thanks for hanging out on Keith's Garage. I appreciate it, appreciate all subscribers. Couldn't come back, man. That, you guys keep me going. Um, if you like what you see, please subscribe. Any questions or comments, so I appreciate your comments. And um, if you can share, or give it a thumbs up, man. Appreciate it. We'll catch you on the next one. It won't be long. It won't be long. Less than a week. Okay? See you on the next one. Thanks.